Hello, welcome to tonight's edition of the Evening Review. My name is Toywan Jabela, your host for tonight. Let's quickly look at the front page of today's Namibian Sun. Uh, segment tonight I'm joined on the couch by uh, Lieutenant General Martin Shelley who was uh, at some stage the Chief of Defense Force here in Namibia and also our Ambassador to, Zamb uh, to Zambia. Uh, General welcome to the show. Okay thank you very much for inviting me. Yes you, you what have you been up to since you retired uh, in 2011? Um, I only realized later that uh, there is a uh, there's, there's more life in, in actual fact beyond the retirement. So yeah. I've been enjoying my, my, my free time, uh, using it purposely and also assisting others, my family, um, reading and generally I'm just uh, my own and uh, quite busy. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that I'm lying. I, I, always, I wake up at five o'clock every morning, can't believe it. And the earliest I go to bed is uh, 22 hours. <laughs> yes. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You, you, you retired um, a bit earlier. You were not 68. Uh, as a matter of fact, if I remember correctly, that year there was a statement issued by uh, Albert Kawana, who was the uh, Minister of Presidential Affairs at the time, saying, you know, President Bahamba has retired you. W what did that mean? Retired you? What, what did you make of that uh, development at the time? Yeah, I think, Trevor, you know the answer to that. Uh, <laughs> you guys have been writing about this so many <laughs> times. Uh, it's been, uh, yes, the statement you mentioned, uh, the news that's been going around, uh, that General Charlie is, uh, is, a, is corrupt, he's uh, stolen money, he's done all sorts of things. I believe it was just the right thing for President Pomba to do to restore confidence. Did you steal money? No, I have not stolen money. He did not steal money. Yeah. We'll, come, we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, yeah, of course, as a matter of fact, the, the accusation at the time was that um, you accepted uh, bribes in, in millions of dollars or worth millions of dollars from uh, a Chinese contractor that had a contract with NDF at the time while you were chief of defense. Uh, as, how truthful was that? And as a matter of fact, what, what happened to that case? Because we never heard you in court, in being in court lately. Uh, I don't know what happened to the case, um, and I'm not interested. Uh, what, I, what I know is that uh, uh, there was no such thing, mm. and uh, maybe somebody else knows better, but uh, as I said, I was never involved in any, any bribery or any sort of uh, any scheme mm. uh, aimed at uh, cheating the government in any form or shape. Indeed. Uh, so, 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 so what, 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 what? What did you hear last of that case? What, what, what was the last time you had anything regarding that case? I don't even remember. It's been a long, long time back. And, uh, so you're, you're reminding me for, for the first time in many, many years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, so could it be that the, the fact that uh, there's no pursuit of that matter that uh, somehow might be those who brought the, the, the charges against you who in the first place realized that there was no case? Uh, do you feel vindicated in some way? 
Is there more can I, 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 so, so them who can answer that question, to be honest, because yeah. I have no idea what happened. Indeed. <coughs> um, you, you, tell me, General, you, you are a, a military man, um, a decorated soldier, as I said in the intro. Um, but um, you are also, of course, aligned to the ruling party. So that's your party, that's where, where you grew up, that's where you cut your teeth. As a young upcoming soldier, and that's why, and that's, and that's why I shall die. <laughs> that's why you shall die, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> so, in in 2012, there was this um, attempt uh, by the Swapo Youth League uh, to they nominated you, uh, Jesus, uh, General Jesus Awala Peter Namundunga, uh, as representatives of uh, the Youth League to the 2012 uh, Swapo Congress. What, what was your reaction when you first heard that? Were you approached, and why didn't you go to to the Congress to represent the youth? It was a vote of confidence, I suppose. You cannot represent an organization for which you do not qualify to be a member. Yeah. It's simple as that. As simple as that. Yeah. How do you do that? But they said you were, you know, I understand. They said you were, uh, uh, I think the reason given at the time was that you were a... How, how did you react to them? Did you tell them that? How, how did you take that nomination, as a matter of fact? No, when they did, we sat down, we discussed this, and I think we, were, we made it clear that... Uh, it's a, it's a little bit of a, a, a problem actually to have generals nominated by a, a wing uh, youth, youth, youth league for, for that matter mm. to be a delegate to the Congress of Swapo and all that. But uh, if you had to go to Congress, you could have found another way to go to Congress it, indeed. other than uh, being nominated through uh, a wing of the party. Yeah, yeah. So what would have been one of the ways to do it, to go there normally without having to go through the wings? What, what, there's so many ways. I mean, there's so many ways you can get there if you wanted to. Um, personally, I don't think I have too much interest in politics at the highest level. I'm happy to be a foot soldier, been always, and I'm happy to be what I am, God of Swapo, and like I said, I will remain in Swapo, I'll die there, mm. and I'll do my best or I'll carry out any other assignment. So, mm. by the party, any time. Indeed, <coughs> but but you know, general, with your with your wealth of of experience in the party, with your exposure uh, in the military and elsewhere, um, uh, there will be those in Swabo who think that uh, you should be involved at a higher level uh, to really uh, impart some of that knowledge to the party. In what way are you doing that now? Uh, there's so many ways you can do to help the party, S doing small things here and there, within your, your, your within your, your ranking in, in SWAP. Like I'm saying, as, as of today, I'm just an ordinary member of SWAP, and I'm happy to be an ordinary member of, uh, of SWAP. But I'm a cadre, mm -hmm. so I'm ready to, to do whatever the, my party tells me at all different levels. Yes, you ask whether... Uh, you said there are some people who feel that um, probably I could uh, do things much better at, a, at another level. Uh, I don't know what level you mean, maybe leadership you mean. Um, but I am, uh, that's not what is uh, what's important to me. Um, I have not had anybody telling me that. So quite interesting if people do and uh, I want to thank them whoever they are. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> now we are approaching also the um Kasinga uh, commemoration, I think, on Monday next week. Um, what, what can you tell us about that day? Where, where were you in 1978 when that uh, bombardment took place? Yes. Um, first of all, let's start with uh, tomorrow is uh, it's a very important day, mm -hmm. um, both in the history of Namibia and in our political calendar, because uh, uh, many people have fought and died for this country. Uh, have our workers mm. and uh, they've been a uh, workers have been in uh, uh, one of the strongest allies of Swapo and supporters of liberation struggle so I would like to thank them and congratulate them on their on their day tomorrow yes casting is a sad part of our history mm. uh, 4th of May marks this this tomorrow I mean uh, this year marks a 42nd anniversary after the attack on Kasinga mm. as well as the battle of Chetekera mm. So we would like to, for that, I think we'd like to thank those, those who, who died and those who shed the blood on that particular day at those two, two different places at the same time. Mm. 
and uh, may their soul continue to rest in peace. So this was a sad moment. I still don't understand the logic of uh, uh, a normal thinking individual approving a plan to attack a, a civilian settlement. Mm. So, as you know, the population of Kasinga at that time, uh, I'm told, I didn't, that it was about, there were about 3,000 mm. people. So, 711 died. Uh, people, people say, argue whether they're 611 or 612. Mm. But from the records of the soldiers who went there the next day in 50, were actually taking individuals and burying them in those two mass graves, the account says 711. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, whatever the case may be. So, we, and I think what's most important uh, thing is uh, for us Namibians to remember that uh, uh, for Namibia to be free, so many people have lost their lives. Mm. Civilian, military, abroad, inside Namibia. Yes, I was, um, Kasinga was attacked two days after I've, 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 I've left Kasinga. Really? Yeah, I was assigned by uh, mm, uh, that time Chief of Staff, uh, today General Namoro, former Minister of uh, Defense. Mm. Uh, why? Because he was acting commander of the Northeastern Front, where I was uh, also serving. Mm. So I, there were things I, I was assigned to go to Kasinga and uh, I left the Kasinga on the 2nd of May, mm. and then on the 4th, the attack took place. I was still on my way back to our regional headquarters when the attack commenced uh, at around 8 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, stuck between, that time I was uh, stuck between uh, Wonjiva and a uh, small town to the east of Wonjiva, 30 kilometers away, called Kwangari. Mm. So when we stopped, they were the poster there, we were stopped by others, they said, hey, stop, stop. Apparently when we stopped, we had planes going, going overhead. Mm. So, because they were taking Oshetekera and the Kasinga at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, that's exactly what, uh, what happened, they were, that's where I was, yeah. Indeed. <coughs> so, when, when you think of that, you know, <laughs> in that case it can be argued easily that you were actually, um, uh, you know, fate was on your side that you were not there in the camp. Of course, you never know there were survivors. Maybe you could have survived also. But uh, when you think of what, of that battle and many others that you were involved personally or that you know personally of, what is the best way to honor as a country today? What is the best way to honor those uh, who perished uh, or fought in these battles? Um, and avoid betraying uh, their sacrifices. What is it that we must do to really honor that sacrifice? You mean, uh, you mean uh, like uh, those who, all those who have fought over the 23 years that you've been involved in the liberation struggle on yes. this particular day? All of them. All of them. Uh, we had the reason to go to war. And uh, the reason for that is actually independence and freedom that we enjoy today. And for Namibia to be where it is today, we must be a proud nation for having achieved that against all odds, against the most powerful military force on the African continent. A force that is... Just remember, the, as much as we say racist, where we call them racist troops and all the rest of it, as much as we recognize them as Africans, we can't change that now, but these are people originally who come from Europe. Mm. You see, they're foreigners on the African continent who have become Africans by, by virtue of having stayed on the continent for such a long time, not necessarily because they become black. Mm, mm, mm. So it's kind of European army that we are fighting. Mm, mm, mm. Because it's white. It's not like, uh, it's not like when you went to, to DRC, for example. That wasn't, we're facing an African army. But this one is European Army stationed in Africa and all the rest are with the support from all the Western. Now you understand why the other whites mm, mm. outside Africa 
you name them, Europe, whatever. They're mm -hmm. giving support to the South Africans, uh, South African uh, racist regime, despite uh, their policy, the policy of apartheid, that, that, uh, um, and inhuman and injustices that they're meeting out against the the true African people. Mm -hmm. So, in the case of Namibia, this is what we've been fighting for. We have achieved that. We must be proud of ourselves, I, I repeat to myself. But those of us who are there today must uh, always remember these people mm. and remember the sacrifices they've made and recognize them because that is the basis of our nationhood. Mm -hmm. That's how we were born. And to betray them um, is a, is a better of the revolution in total. Indeed. But I think, I hope we don't get there. You also asked whether uh, I consider myself lucky or not to have been just left to Kasinga before the attack. In fact, uh, in fact, the opposite. I wish I, I was there <laughs> when they came. I probably have made, um, made a difference made at a level. personal level. There was some personal level. Yeah, I'm not saying those who were there uh, would not do much, mm -hmm. but I wish I was there. Indeed. And then see, yeah, whether I died there, I've lived, survived, it doesn't really matter, but mm -hmm. in fact, I thought I could probably defend one or two more people. Maybe the, the number of the death, uh, the dead could, because I was not alone. Yes. I had a small group of uh, soldiers with me. Mm -hmm. So we're about seven, eight, or maybe nine. All armed, the very armed, the experienced. We could have done something. Indeed. No question about that. No question about that. Yeah. <coughs> uh, talk to me, General, about Cuba. Um, Whenever Kasinga comes into the picture, whenever we talk about the commemorative date comes, um, we talk about Cuba. Uh, of course, the, the, the soldiers also came to the rescue that day, later in the day, according to my understanding. I was not born that time. <laughs> I know. But, <laughs> but um, how important was Cuba in uh, that particular battle, but also just in general to Swapo during the liberation struggle? It would be a miss of me, in actual fact, and uh, a big mistake if I don't... Uh, mentioned the role that Cuba has played uh, in, uh, in the liberation of Africa, certainly in particular Namibia, and also on that specific day of the 4th of, uh, the 4th of May, 16 Cuban soldiers died coming to the rescue of the, those refugees who were attacked in Kasinga. And if they had not intervened, I promise you, the number of dead could have been probably double that we are talking today. So they have saved our lives. And they also made us possible to achieve independence the way we have achieved it. Probably not at the time we were supposed to, we, 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 we achieved it. Mm -hmm. But still, I think it was timely that they came to, to us. They're just as important as they are in the, uh, they're just as important, or they were just as important as they are today in the COVID fight. Mm -hmm. You see them all over. Yeah, giving all, all over the world. Yeah, Bring in doctors and things. If COVID, ask the Italians what do they will say when COVID goes away. Yeah. They will have to thank the Cubans like we are thanking them. Mm? Yes. Uh, <coughs> the last one on Kasinga General is um, the, 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 the notion perpetrated by uh, those attackers to justify the attack to say, look, Swapo is not being truthful. This was not just a a community camp with pregnant women and, and children. Uh, it was a camp with armed men, I suppose, also suggesting that some of those armed men from time to time went out to attack somewhere. How do you respond to that? Absolute nonsense. Look, we have, uh, even, even in South Africa, there have been installations, what they call installations, military bases, if you like, where they, where they also house uh, civilians their wives, their children, living on the same complex. Just that's just fine. Somebody to go and attack a base that is incorporated also by children. Why not others? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to kill Swap, we want to kill Swap, so why go kill civilian terrorists? Why not military terrorists? Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a difference there. Between military terrorists, in the, in the way they put it that time, and civilian terrorists, they're supposed to make a distinction. As much as they didn't like all Swap members, they're not supposed to kill them in the same fashion mm. or in the fashion that they did. It's absurd nonsense. Mm. So, the fact that, I tell you this, the fact that uh, 
and this effect, the fact that General Jim, oh, Jim Amamo, the commander, a plan, and this political commissar Greenwell Matongo, and his deputy, Jonas Aidua, who died on that day there, were in Kasinga with a small contingent. There was an office there. That's not justify. Yeah, you can go and attack about 30 people, mm. plus a demo, or go after a demo, went to kill demo, and at the same time, you want to kill well, you know, 2,000 or so other innocent people. Does not make sense to me. Mm -hmm. Does not make sense to me. Mm -hmm. And now look, that's the argument they make. They have not, not killed the demo. Yeah. They have not killed the Greenway Matongo. I do a died fighting. He went out of the base, decided to come back, say, no, no, I can't leave my people like this. I had to go back to the base. They said, damn it, they don't even know to have killed him. The majority of the military people were there, small contingent that was there. Did also not die there. Mm. Did you know, no, these numbers, most the majority of them are civilians. It's absolute, absolute nonsense to me. It doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. to me. It's not a justification. We are not saying Dimo was not there. Mm -hmm. We are not saying what he was, uh, we are not answering question what he was doing there either. Mm -hmm. And you not have uh, no apology to make. No apology to make. I, I, I am now, you have drawn my attention to something now different. Uh, how, how did Dimo and, and, and Greenwald uh, survive that attack? Way? Did they run away or? They did not run away. They did not run away. Where did you run to? <laughs> Where did you run to? So, they been there, I mean, Bolongojo will tell you, others, the camp commander, oh, I forgot his name now, died there, and so forth. You can survive anything, you can survive anything. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, you watch television today and things, you know, even in, when people blow up buildings and churches and, and whatever, you, you see people very emerging from the ashes, yeah. whether it's in Mogadishu or Kabu or other p places. Yeah. Yeah, even in the, what is this tower? The in New York? Yeah, yeah, the, the Twin Towers. Twin uh, Tower. Mm -hmm. Despite it collapsing to the ashes, there are still people who tell the story. Yeah. Who've been there. Indeed. Firefighters, some died, some are still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. <coughs> the final question to you generally not, is... Not, uh, not even COVID, you finish us. <laughs> not even COVID. No, no. <laughs> can kill us number, but yeah. not all of us. To leave some of us who not come to, to tell the story. It's not coming to wipe out the human race from the face of the earth, no. Indeed. But you just have to be extra careful. Indeed. <coughs> um, the final question generally is on, um, on the military, the NDF itself. You, you yes. are a military man. Yeah, you succeeded, part of, part of why you succeeded as a, as a successful soldier was discipline. Uh, because I, I, I hear the word discipline being preached every other time by military people. So I look at uh, the current situation in the country where you come across accusations every other week of soldiers having abused uh, civilians, having assaulted civilians. Uh, last year a soldier actually killed um, a Zimbabwean taxi driver um, uh, through, through Operation... Um, that operation that we had. Kalahari. Kalahari, <coughs> indeed. Is it a question of soldiers not trained how to deal with civilians, or is it just arrogance? And if it's a lack of training, must a modern military still be that, ignorant that uh, it doesn't pay attention to human rights? Uh, no. Uh, one incident or two or three can really not be. Uh, cannot classify what, what, what the NDF is, can also not quantify the amount or level of discipline there is. It can also not, uh, of course, uh, 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 paint uh, any wrong picture of uh, the entire force. Mm -hmm. The nature of joint operations with the police anywhere in the world are complicated. I want you to tell me when, if you want to talk about discipline or soldiers are not disciplined or they're not behaving uh, well, you, I want you to give me an incident where the NDF members only did, where, where they were operating mm. and such things that you mentioned 
happened. Really, that will happen. But in the case when you are a soldier, you are not a policeman. You are a soldier. The commander, because of the nature of the operations, the, it's a police-led operation. Now the military go there to support the police. Mm. In the case of the driver, the Germans, a guy comes, he turns around. <coughs> he turns around. Mm. And all of a sudden somebody says, because we, we are trained to shoot better, and we are also trained, uh, a soldier, distinct, we are trained to kill. Mm. Yeah? They are trained to arrest people and bring them before court. Mm. You heard that statement. Mm -hmm. So, but it does not just fire as shooting at civilians. Yes. It's up to the individual, the visibility, the distance between the down, and the intention at the point. It could be that he was aiming at actually stop the car. Yeah. And then, uh, because I was, I, don't, I was not told that he fired two, three, four shots, so it's only one single shot. Mm. So, and when the car came to a standstill, they thought maybe they stopped the car by shooting them a tire flat or things. Close observation, the driver been dead. If it were the enemy in the military, I would say, good soldier. Yeah. That's how we want him to, to do. That's exactly what he's trained to do. So, but it's, it's the nature of the operation, the joint operation of the police, that I think a problem. And I'm sure, um, I understand that they, they, address, they are trying to address uh, this, this particular issue. Mm -hmm. You've seen it also in the, uh, when we had the state of emergency the other time in the Capri, this is finished. Yes. Yeah, there were such things happening. Most of them carried out by the police because of the nature of the police or the police trying to arrest somebody, so resisting, the soldiers coming and the guys throwing stones at you and at you and things. Mm. In a situation like that, depending on who's leading the operation, the level of command, the communication, maybe you don't have time to communicate sufficiently enough back to the headquarters, such incidents can easily happen. Yes. But yes, um, it's, uh, I'm not trying to defend uh, the wrongs, I'm not trying to, but I'm uh, just advising so that people improve on these things. But quite honestly, uh, such incidents should not be judged uh, uh, differently. You saw the police in Zambia when they shot uh, seven bototos from Namibia. <laughs> what do you call that? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> yeah? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You come from Namibia, you go to rob people in Zambia, mm -hmm. and they to want police to find the air. Does it make sense to me? Yeah, they fought back. As, as a matter of fact, they seem to have also fired at uh, the soldiers, so they, uh, maybe the response was the only, that, that's the only response. I mean, I've not seen a full report of the investigation, but they said, honestly, something must have go, gone wrong somewhere, somehow. So I think so. But it's not that we were trained really just to shoot a taxi, the taxi trying to turn away. <laughs> no. Yeah. <coughs> okay. No, no, thank you very much, General, for your time. Yeah, you finally, yes. if you allow me, I would like also to take this opportunity, at a personal level, to actually thank the, those uh, uh, frontline health professionals that are helping this country to fight COVID-19, and all of us, we must support them. Yes. We must support also the government, we must support the Minister of Health and all others involved in this. There are so many, there's a lot of at stake here. And as a nation, let's continue to behave in a manner as advised, even if the president today lifts the lockdown, which I suspect is not going to be the case, totally. Measures, putting new measures in place, we still have to maintain social distancing. Yes. Including washing our hands regularly. Indeed. And in the case of emergencies, we all know what to do. Otherwise, we must protect ourselves in order to protect others. Indeed. Thank you very much, General. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you heard the General. He's very happy with uh, the effort of frontline staff uh, involved in the fight against COVID-19. He's urging us to abide by the measures. He's confident that uh, COVID-19 will come and go. And uh, that is my uh, hope as well. So thank you for watching. Uh, good night.